Frostlass is one of those Pokemon that everyone seems to use the exact same way. Well, not today. My name is Just Weavile, and welcome to my Pokemon Wi-Fi Battle series, where we try to bring out the potential of every Pokemon there is. So if that's your cup of tea, why not subscribe so you don't miss out? Let's get started. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun to my opponents. So they're going to lead off with Great Tusk, as I led off with Zapdos, so this is a great lead for us. Um, I figured they would lead with this, or maybe Cinderace, um, but they have got the Thunderous Varian, which does resist our Flying Stab and is immune to Volt Switch. So, it's obvious we're going to go for a Hurricane here, so let's just go for the Hurricane. Uh, may as well try and get the KO on the Great Tusk straight away, because that'd be awesome. They go for a Stealth Rocks, that's fine. They are Speeders, which tells me they've got some speed investment, because my Zapdos doesn't. Um, <laughs> so, let's see what happens here with the Hurricane. They, of course it misses, it has to miss. That would have been really nice. So, let's go for a Hurricane again. There's no real reason not to. They go for an Ice Spinner. That's fine. It's going to do a little bit of damage. Nothing too bad. Nothing too drastic. We get a Static as well, which is really cool. And then all we have to do is go for a Hurricane and hit this time. Yay! There we go. Hurricane hits. Let's see if it KOs. It does KO. So we wouldn't have took that damage. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's whatever. Anyway, the Great Tusk goes down. That's what's important. So I think if that, anything was going to stand up, that is, is that and the Aloma Molar that we need to get rid of for the Frostlass. King Gambit comes in. That's an interesting choice. So King Gambit comes in now. We could have Heat Wave, but we don't. Um, they get the Supremo Lord from the uh, Great Tusk KO. Um, I think I will just Thunder Wave this thing just to kind of get that Paralysis chance on there. I think that'll be beneficial to us because, I mean, this might, might, might be Lumberry as well. There's always a possibility, um, which is not. But they go for a Swords Dance anyway. They're setting up to sweep right off the bat, which is fair enough. Um, I'm going to roost off the damage real quick because they probably go for a Sucker Punch now. So they go for the Sucker Punch, which is fine. That's one PP gone. And they've got seven left, potentially seven. Unless they haven't used a PP max, in which case they've got four left. Anyway, we go for a roost. We get that damage uh, restored. So plus two Sucker Punch probably doesn't KO us. Let's go for a Volt Switch and just find out. We'll get some chip damage off on this King Gambit real quick. So we go for the Volt Switch like so. This time, they haven't gone for a Sucker Punch, which is good to note. They've probably gone for a Kato Cleave, um, in which case we should go into something to take care of that. And <laughs> there isn't really much on my team to take care of that. I don't really have the best King Gambit switchings in the world. Um, so it looks like I'm sacking something off. <laughs> um, you don't look like you're going to be useful this game. Let's go into Clawitzer, because they could get fully paralyzed at the end of the day, and then we can scare them out. So Clawitzer comes in. Stealth Rocks do dig into us, which is unfortunate. They go for a Kato Cleave, they do not get paralyzed. Now he's going to take us out, unfortunately. So, with Arm Cannons out of the way, um, the best thing we have to take care of is King Gambit right now. I want to save I want to save Frostlass for that Cinderace. Because I want to Terrifier in its face and then Poltergeist it to death. That's what I want to do. So I think in this case, we'll go Registeel. Registeel can probably still get outsped by this thing. It's nice and shiny, though, which is always nice. Uh, Stones do dig in. Um, which is fine. We go for a body press here every single time because it should KO. They're going to terrestrialize, so it won't KO. Never mind. Never mind. King Gambit is going to terrestrialize into a flying type. Okay, that's awesome. That's awesome for them. Let's see what they do here. They might go for another Swords Dance, to be fair. Uh, we go for a body press with Dark Speed, which is nice. Would have definitely done a lot more damage to the King Gambit as it was. It wasn't even a crit. It did nothing. They go for a Kato Cleave, though. That's going to take that in it. No, it does an awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. So, since this thing's a flying type, um, I'm looking at the rest of the team. We can't really touch them. We can't touch them. It's the end of discussion. We can't touch them right now. Um, so, you know, we know we outspeed, though. So, let's go for a Stealth Rot real quick, because they probably go for a Sucker Punch, right? They couldn't move because they're paralyzed. They went for Sucker Punch. Would have failed anyway, so the paralysis doesn't really matter there. So we go for a Stealth Rocks. May as well get them up. May as well get them up. As there they go. So Stealth Rocks are in. We get a leftover recovery though, which is great. And uh, what we could do now is, if we assume they're going to go for another Sucker Punch, we could go for an Iron Defense, but no, it won't make a difference. It won't make a difference. Uh, we just go for a Heavy Slam and KO ourselves. They go for a Sucker Punch, it's going to KO Ridgey Zeal, that's fine. Uh, they could have gone for either Kato, Cleave, or not. But now they're a flying type, it's imperative. Imperative. That my Zapdos does not switch into a Kato Cleave because it will not be able to take the next hit. 
However, I firmly believe it can take a sucker punch from this thing. So we're going to Fundaja now. He's not going to get any Stealth Rock Chip, which is good. All we do is go for a Volt Switch, and then Frostlass can finish the thing off with an Ice Shard. They go for the Sucker Punch. It won't Chaos, right? No, it doesn't Chaos. Awesome. We go for a Volt Switch. That nearly does the job. Awesome source. So, we've got a thing to worry about here. Uh, Frostlass can definitely finish this thing off with Ice Shard right now. So, we'll go into Banshee. Um, we just go for an Ice Shard. Ice Shard should KO from here. If it doesn't, I'm going to be severely disappointed in Frostlass. Severely disappointed in Frostlass. So, let's go for the Ice Shard now. Ice Shard comes through. Really? Oh, they couldn't move because they were paralyzed. Never mind. Never mind. I'm not disappointed anymore because that Ice Shard invoked paralysis. It was that scary that it made the King Gambit literally be paralyzed in fear. Let's give her another Ice Shard real quick. Ice Shard comes through. Again, I'm hoping they bring the Cinderace in. Part of me, wants, part of me wishes I put like Life Orb on this thing or something. Because Life Orb, would, it would have KO'd if it was Life Orb. But it is what it is. Frostlass takes it down. We get a KO with Frostlass. That's good enough for me. Even if it... <laughs> King Gambit is just really bulky, right? <laughs> Cinderace comes in. This is the perfect opportunity for us. Now that the Cinderace is in, nice and shiny. I say nice and shiny. It's not really that nice. Uh, we go for a Terror Fire Poltergeist right now. That is the way to go forward. They didn't take any self rock chips, so we know they're holding an item, which is going to be the Heavy Dew Boots. Which we're going to smack him in the face within a second with Poltergeist, so that's awesome. So we Terror Fire. Like so. Boom. And uh, we go, they go for a U-turn, which is interesting. So U-turn comes through. That's going to do a bit of chip. Nothing too drastic. They probably thought we would switch out there, which is fair enough. Um, but what are they going to take this Poltergeist? Because I'm looking at some things here. The, the Aloma Mola can probably take it. But we'll see if the Aloma Mola is Assault Vest or not. There's the Aloma Mola. We get to see whether it's Assault Vest now, which is which would be interesting if it was. They do get some Stealth Rock Chip, which is nice. We go for a Poltergeist and miss. Red card. I mean, that, that's fine. We get a bit of chip off on it. And then it activates said red card. Which means we can't no longer use Poltergeist on the Aloma Mola as well, which is kind of big. Um, right, okay, so what do we get dragged into? Zapdos, perfect, even perfecter. So what we can do now is we can freely go for a roost here because they're more than likely going to go into Thunderous as a switch in. We go for a roost. They've probably gone for a flip turn, to be fair. Or a Miracle, one of the two. We'll see now, though. Scold, that's fine. Scold isn't going to do too much damage to us. It does burn us, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. I'm just happy that Zapdos has got a bit of health left because Zapdos is going to be pretty important in this game. For taking care of certain things. So let's go for a... Do we go for a Thunder Wave? Let's go for a Thunder Wave real quick. Just to paralyze this Aloma Mola. They withdraw the Aloma Mola this turn. Expecting the electric move. They're going to go into Thunderous, I'm guessing. Yeah, Thunderous comes in. It's probably not even Heavy Duty Boots. Nice and shiny though. We've got to love it. Yeah, they're not Heavy Duty Boots. Tells me they might be Scarf. They might be Sashed. Thunder Wave is going to heal that health right back. Like so. And then our burn's going to take effect. So... Now, what do we do against this thing? Um, it's going to go for an electric type attack. I say we go Cyclizar and we drop a Draco. I say we go Cyclizar and drop a Draco. That's that's pretty much my game plan right now. So, Motorola comes in. There we go. Stones do dig into us, which is unfortunate. They go for the Volt Switch. That's fine. It's going to do a lot of damage. Tells me there might be Specs. Tells me they may be Specs because I didn't see Life Orb. They're not Boots. They're probably Specs. Cinderace comes in, which is fine. So, if Cinderace is in, are we going to see a Sucker Punch here? Probably. Do we go for a Rapid Spin anyway? I want to get rid of these rocks. Although, saying that, the only thing that... No, because they'll hit the Iron Moth. I say we go for a... We don't want to knock off, because then we can't hit it with Poltergeist. So it kind of makes it a bit redundant to put knock off on this team. Um, do we go for a Draco? I think we can still use Cyclozar, so I'm going to go for a Draco here. It'll do a lot of damage. Yeah, it does a lot of damage to the Cinderace, which is awesome. And then our uh, Eject Pack's going to activate, sending us right out. And we'll just go into Zapdos, because Zapdos is physically defensive, but it ain't doing anything to most of the team. So let's go to Zapdos now. Fundaja comes in. Tells me they don't have Sucker Punch on the Cinderace as well. 
they go for a pyro ball that's fine it's going to sting a little bit not too drastically um, but unfortunately that does mean Zapdos is going to go down here so unless they miss the pyro ball in which case we go for a roost here U-turn, that's fine. u turns going to definitely KO us, but at least it gives us some momentum because it KOs us, which means we get a free switch in on whatever they bring in. And we got the static as well. Just setting up ready. For, this is just setting up ready for Frostlast to do its thing. You know? So Cinderace goes back. Are we going to see a Thunderous? I think Thunderous would make sense. I think Thunderous would make sense. Sloking. Even better. So we're Sloking in. It's also heavy duty boots. We go into our Frostlass here every single time. Like so. Frostlass comes in all Terra Fire and everything. Um, do we go for a Poltergeist or do we predict the switch? I say we go for a Poltergeist. So I think they'll stay in. Yeah, we go for a Poltergeist. They do stay in. Heavy duty boots, which is correct. Yep, I knew that. Nearly gets the job done as they go for a Sludge Bomb, which doesn't quite get the job done. So now... If we assume they're going to switch out, we should go for a triple axle just to get some damage off on the Aloma Mola, right? We may as well. They do withdraw the Slow King. Are they going to go into the Aloma Mola? They do go into the Aloma Mola, which obviously Poltergeist wouldn't have affected, which is why I've gone for triple axle. Because even though it's not much damage, it's still damage at the end of the day. So triple axle comes through once, twice, three times, and it's just a bit of chip, you know? It's a bit of chip. Frostless is doing all right here. Frostless is doing all right. So if we assume they're going to go for a Scold here to try and take us out, we should go into our Cyclozar. I think Cyclozar can handle this no problem. So we're going to Cyclozar. Um, what we'll do is, because we want the Iron Moth to have as much health as possible for if, it, if it's going to be the late game cle cleaner, um, which it might be, they go for a Wish. Interesting choice. So what are they going to go into? Probably, I would say Cinderace or Slow King. I'm going to go for a rapid spin anyway. Get rid of those rocks. And also raise our speed. But they have stayed in, which is interesting. And they go for an acrobatics, which is a very interesting move to have on an Alola Malola. So they have Scold Acrobatics Wish. And what else? Probably... Let's go for a Draco. They probably have Flip Turn on there as well. So Draco Meteor comes through. Does half, which is great. Good damage. And they go for another Acrobatics, which takes out Cyclozar. But Cyclozar got rid of the rocks, did half health to the Aloma Mola. Looking pretty good right now. Looking pretty good. So, Frostlax looks great if we can get rid of this thing. So, let's go into Iron Moth now. And the great thing about the Iron Moth strategy here is that they haven't got a lot that can switch in. Because we're going to get a booster in speed. We outspeed everything on the team now. And the we go for a Fiery Dance here every single time, right? Yeah, Fiery Dance comes through. We just need to get the, the Aloma Mola and we're, we're golden. So, we go for the Fiery Dance. Get a special attack boost? No, we don't get a special attack boost. Skull comes through. That's fine. But now that we know that they're going to stay in here, we should go for an Energy Ball. So, Energy Ball comes through. Takes out the Aloma Mola. And I don't mind anything taking me out. So, I'm just hoping and praying that Cinderace doesn't have Sucker Punch like I think it doesn't. So Slow King comes in. That's fine. Slow King, you can come in. Again, this is this is all going to come down to Frost, Frostlass, I think. I think it all comes down to Frostlass. Um, let's go for a Fiery Dance just to get some damage off on this thing. Frostmoth late game sweep? Maybe. We get a special attack boost. They go for an Eerie Spell. I haven't seen that move used. Ever. But it's pretty cool animation. I will say that. It's a really cool animation. So... What needs to happen now is we're going to bring Frostlass in. Frostlass needs to hit this next Poltergeist. Or do we go for a Terra Blast? No, because I don't think Terra Blast will KO. <laughs> I'm really underestimating it. Um, we have to hit the Poltergeist. We have to hit three triple axles against the Thunderous. And we have to also get the Cinder Cinderace paralyzed. So we need to get fully paralyzed if it has Sucker Punch. Let's go for a Poltergeist. I like my odds. They withdraw the Slow King. And they go into Cinderace, which is interesting. So Cinderace comes in. Nice and shiny. We go for a Poltergeist. Do we miss? No, we don't miss. That's great. That's the second KO. 
Second KO. Second KO for Frostlass. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Slowking comes in now. With more health than before. So. It all comes down to this, does it? It all comes down to this, does it? Whether or not we can KO with Poltergeist right here, right now. Let's see if we do it. We do. We do it. We KO with Poltergeist. Because Slow King can't do nothing to physical Frost Lass. Which is absolutely insanely cool. Um, now Thunderous comes in, which we think is choice specs based on the damage it did to Cyclazar. Could be wrong. We need to hit all three triple axles here. So let's go for it. We should outspeed the Thunderous unless it's Scarfed. So triple axles come through. They are not Scarfed. Once. Twice. Three times, a lady. And there goes Frostlass came through for us. What can I say? Frostlass came through for us. GG Monstrosity. That was a really fun one. That was a really it was a nice long one as well. That's great. That's awesome stuff. Frostlass put in work. 